What's good? It's Postman, LiveOffBeats.com. We back with another video. I know you're like, you know, it's been a minute where you've been at Post, you know, but I've been around the world now, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're just going to get into it. Um, got a couple things I want to address, a couple things I want to share with you and hopefully inspire you. You know, some of y'all get inspired from the video. Um, first thing, let me say this, a disclaimer. You know, every time I post a video like this, someone comes in and says, Man, you should get a better camera, man. What's going on, man? You got money. Where's your camera? Let me explain this, okay? This is called a fucking webcam, you buffoon, okay? And that's a lot of love I'm saying this, but it, it really is a retarded thing to say. This is a webcam. I do have digital cameras. I do have uh, HD cameras and all that, of course, but I'm recording on this webcam straight to YouTube. It's a streaming audio, streaming video and audio straight to YouTube. I don't have to upload. I don't have to edit. So I don't feel like doing none of that shit. Now they got it. I've been doing videos on YouTube since before all the new shit on here. If y'all go back years and years, a decade of doing this shit on YouTube. So now they got it to where, look, I ain't got to edit a video. I ain't got to fucking upload shit. I can go right to YouTube. This is a God's gift to Postman and Live Off Beats because... That made me not want to do no damn videos and do all that extra shit. You know, now I can just do this, get my message to you. And, and, and to me, it's just more personal. Now, you know, the thing is, though, it, it, that comment makes me more uncomfortable than anything because usually it's dudes saying that. Now, I had one girl say that, and I can understand. She's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You know, I need, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see you in HD. You know what I'm saying? You're pretty. You know what I'm saying? You're looking good. I want to see HD. But for a male, I don't understand why you want to see me more clear. I mean, what, you want to you wanna see my smooth skin? I mean, what, you like my silky smooth, my chocolate? I mean, what is it that you want to see more clear? You understand what I'm saying? I don't really understand. I ain't seen nothing but my face anyway and, and up part of my body. I mean, you know, there's a little, little wiggle juice in you. I mean, I, I don't understand why you want to see me a lot more clear. You understand what I'm saying? I, I'm not completely sure about that. The ladies, I understand now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see, you know, but, you know, some of you dudes out there, maybe it's a little something extra. You know, you might want to check yourself, you know what I'm saying? A little something extra going on there, why you want to see another man a lot clearer when what's important is what's coming out of his mouth from the message. But I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I digress. Second thing you probably want to post, why do you have a fucking stocking on your head? Okay, many of you probably think I'm trying to get waves. I already, my waves are killing already. But it's just I haven't had a haircut, and, and you know, I don't like to go before the people with my hair looking the way it does. And, um... It's the reason why I haven't got a haircut, but I'm um, letting my edge grow back in. But um, so some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, the third thing you're probably wondering is, post, why do you have this beard? You, you're unshaven. Well, I'm trying something new. It's 2013. I'm doing a new look. Um, actually, it, it came from uh, the last time I was growing my edge back in, which is probably, you know, the last time I got a haircut before that. So I just said, I'm going to let it grow and grow and grow. And, and what happened was I didn't shave. And I thought I was looking like a beast, but for some reason, women kept coming to me that I knew, like, man, I like that look. You know, you look, you look a lot more grown now. You look, I like that scrub. I'm like, what are you talking about? I look rough. I look like I just came out of a dungeon. Like, but multiple women were telling me this, and so I said, well, you know what? You know, what I'm saying if multiple women are saying this, then I'm gonna go ahead and rock it. You know, what I'm saying if it was guys saying that, I might be a little uncomfortable. But you know, it was multiple women saying it. Nice looking women. Young, beautiful, intelligent women, not, you know, dusty women. Like, oh, I just like dusty stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, they just, they just claim on it. They say they like the look. So I said, this is a more mature, more wise look for me. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm rolling with it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, those are some of those things. Now, I digress from all that stuff. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of why I'm making the video. So first question you might have is, why do you take so long to make videos? Sometimes you make videos, you make a 100 videos in a matter of a fucking month and sometimes you take months off and don't make a video well I only do videos when I'm inspired like I never do a video just to do a video and hear myself talk although I do enjoy hearing myself talk and I do talk quite a bit when I do do a video uh, I never do them just because I have the ability to talk to people and I can probably boost my you know income or whatever um, but I actually do it because I'm inspired to say something. Something moves me to say something that you guys may need to hear. I'm going through things in my life and experiencing things that by sharing them, uh, it may help you go to your next level. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, sometimes I'm inspired just to go in and just do video after video because I got so much that the Spirit is moving me to, to, to express to the community. And then sometimes 
it, you know, I take that break and I'm on my own growth path, you know. Unlike most people may not realize, you know, I spend a lot of my time, you know, in meditation and reflection and studying and, and trying to elevate my kind of not really going out and partying all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing a lot of those things. You know, I'm, I'm doing music, learning about music, studying, studying marketing, you know, the mindset, uh, learning things. And so that's what I want to share with you now is, is some things I discovered. Um, and not that I didn't know them or not that I haven't shared them, not that you don't know them, but sometimes it's refreshing to, to hear it again. Because we're, we're 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 always in this constant way of forgetting the f fundamentals and the principles of, of getting to where we want to get to, and then having to go back to them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we go back to them, and you'll know what I'm talking about in a second. Um, so recently, uh, well, first of all, before I get into the meat and potatoes, let me talk some more a little bit to you, get you get you back comfortable. What's going on in the community? Uh, I'm back checking the emails, so I have a customer service assistant. But I've been checking all my emails. Uh, I've been getting a flooding ton of emails. Um, obviously, you know that. I mean, I just check my email today. It was 100% full, but I respond to everybody. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Showing love. I mean, I get so much love, you know, and that's a testament to the growth of Live Off Beach, a testament to my growth. When I first started, I mean, nine out of ten emails were somebody just telling me how much I suck, telling me, um, uh, that how much I was a scam, I'm scamming producers. You know, I got a lot of emails. Then now, I mean, out of 500 emails, I mean, I don't get not one. I mean, believe it or not, but I, that's a testament to my own growth and consciousness. Before, I used to, you know, really have doubts, like, man, am I doing, is it right, am I, you know what I'm saying, am I really teaching? And now I see every, all these producers that are, our are, are lives are changing, all these human beings, they're, they're, we call them producers because that's what they do, but they're really human beings, you guys, really human beings, and seeing that it's, you know, you're being so inspired, you know, it's just, it's such a blessing, you know, I don't take that stuff for granted. You know, that I'm older now and I'm a little wiser and, and I'm just a little more in touch, you know. So all the emails are just slamming, you know. Man, my life. I mean, if you could see, one day I'm, I amassed, I should I just deleted like 100. And the funny thing, I get testimony like 10 million and I, I should be, you know, collecting all them and, and all that stuff. And I, I do sometimes, but I get so many every single day. But I, I'm going to post them all just so you guys can see. That's that's my next project I'm going to do for Love Our Beaches. Really just post all the testimonials, all the feedback, so you guys can see the community and just really see how impactful this community has been. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's amazing. Like, I mean, I'm talking about life changing stuff, stuff that you never think when you start something, you know, that is going to have that type of impact on the planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't really, you don't really look at yourself as that. Even you, you don't see yourself as that. But it's a testament to the fact that. You don't have to see it. Just do what the fuck you like doing. You know what I'm saying? I like talking shit on the video. So, you know what I'm saying? This shit is natural. You know what I'm saying? I do a 10-hour course. I like talking. That's just naturally what the fuck I do anyway. My grandma used to always tell me, God damn it, you talk so goddamn much and mom's going to get you in trouble. I always got in trouble in school for talking. I always got... Now, no one was conscious enough, of course, to say, you know, this guy has a gift. Let's direct it into something useful. Otherwise, he's just talking shit, getting in fights and, and talking crazy in class, getting kicked out of class. But it's a gift there, you know, because society is not really set up towards that. You know, it's set up by, by savages for the most part. You know what I mean? Like, it really was. And so they don't really have higher conscience. They don't think on those levels, right? You probably experienced that. Like, you, you had certain gifts growing up that you weren't using them for beneficial purposes because no one ever guided you and just said, yo, you know what, man? Yo, he may not be getting good grades or she may not be getting good grades or... They may be doing X, Y, and Z, but they, they seem to be taking a liking to this music thing. Or they seem to be taking a liking to this over here. How can we direct this energy and direct this gift and cultivate it so by the time they get 18, 19, 20, they're already cultivated to be great at something. Already, damn, they're already there. You know what I'm saying? Well, of course, you know, that's not the way it's set up for the most part. Sometimes it is. Some, most times it's not. You understand what I'm saying? I was blessed to, to in my business acumen. You know what I'm saying? I talked my way into programs and I, I found out about different programs that I could join. No one ever request, you know, no one ever said, yo, you should do this. You know what I'm saying? Because you have these gifts, you know, you're out here selling all this shit. You know what I'm saying? When I was, you know, had my, my, my Pokemon card ring at school in junior high. Now you're going to see why I'm telling you all this in a second. So I had my Pokemon card ring. You know, and it was a school-wide ring. Now, it wasn't honest. We were we were jacking people for their Pokemon cards. 
and we had a whole ring. And what happens is, you guys remember those holographics? Some of you older cats don't know what I'm talking about, but some of you young cats know what I'm talking about. You know, that Pokemon card craze. And so we, they had the holographics. And the holographics, you could slang for like five bucks a piece because they were valuable. So what we would do is, you know, like, yeah, Charizard, you're talking about 50, 100 bucks. And so they had the rare ones. So what we would do is, you know, it was a big thing on the school campus. And, I mean, we had a, a, a whole ring. Let me see a photo of a Pokemon card. Yeah, let's trade. Let's see. And then we just, just jack them, take all his holographics, give them back his, his, his cards. You know what I'm saying? And then go out in the yard and slang them five bucks, five bucks, holographics. You know what I'm saying? It was business. Now, eventually, you know, we got, I got caught, you know, as the ringleader and, you know, a, 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 I got pulled out of class by the police and things like that. And then, I, you know, it was a whole big thing. My dad had to come down there to try to take me to jail and all that. My dad helped me out in that situation. But, and I was only eighth grade. I was only like 12 years old. But, instead of seeing like, yo, this dude had an entire operation at the age of 12 that, they had to b do a school-wide ban on Pokemon cards because I had a Pokemon card operation. This was in me. I didn't see it as that. Now that I look back, oh, damn, I was 12 years old with a whole Pokemon card money cash generating operation, baby. You understand what I'm saying? At 12 years old, school-wide, the, where they had to ban the entire Pokemon card usage because of me at this school. They had to ban the whole thing. Now, I felt good about that because I said, hey, I did something so significant that they had to do a entire repolicy on the school. And they, used to have, they used to make announcements of the PA like every day, no Pokemon cards, you know what I'm saying? I felt good every time I heard that. That's a weird thing, right? But I was a kid. I said, wow, I actually impacted something. It was negative, but I was searching and wanting that significance. Now, had an unconscious people would have said, yo, he's only a fucking kid. He doesn't know. But look at his entrepreneurial skills. Let's direct that. You could have that same type of operation, kid. You're only 12. But instead of jacking kids for Pokemon cards and selling them, why not do things wholesale? And here's how you do wholesaling. Here's how you create real products. Here's how you sell and do it the honest way and create profit. See? And then I would have said, wow, that's right. Now, I still want to do that on my own. They would, they should have guided me and said, look, man, you ain't going to get no good grades. We know this. But you're going to be one of the greatest entrepreneurs that ever walked the planet because starting from the age of 12, we're going to guide you. Every single day, this is what we're going to teach you, nothing about but business and economics. And... We see that you graded piano class. You got D's and F's and everything else, but you got an A in piano class. And you, 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 you're one of the best piano players in the school. You're doing recitals in two months. You're playing Beethoven. You got a gift there. Here's a gift. You got a gift for music. We see that in your report card. Now, you got D's and everything else, but God damn it, you got an A, E, E in piano, and you're doing recitals that's killing everybody else at the age of 12. you playing Beethoven and shit like that, Mozart. While the other kids is playing Tinker Tinker Little Bell. You got a, 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 a school-wide operation, business operation. And you doing, and you got a whole enterprise here at the age of 12. Okay, that's evident you got these two gifts in you. Let's just say fuck all this other shit that you ain't going to do. And let's just cultivate these gifts. You, you fast forward to the day. What are the two things I do? I got business operations and I do music. And one of my main businesses is in the music production space, and I teach business. You see what I'm saying? So I was already who I was as a kid, but I wasn't cultivated. So I had to kind of discover shit on my own. So I want you, now why did I tell you this story? I want you to think back to the shit that you was doing, you enjoyed doing. Now one of them is probably music, but what else? And, and you might have gotten in trouble for it. You understand what I'm saying? You might have gotten in trouble for it. You might have uh, uh, not, no one ever told you were good at it. They might just, you know, people might have hated on you for it. The, the pe your peers might have said, you know, because you were so good at these things. You did it all the time that other people try, they feel insecure and try to suppress it in you. Right? It's there. I know it's there. Because you wouldn't be watching a goddamn video if it wasn't there. These things was in you as a kid. So your path was already there. 
but you didn't have the right. This society is not set up to cultivate the children. This society is, is, is in fact, it's, it's, and I'm not trying to scare you, but I mean, this shit is crazy. Now they put the kids on goddamn drugs and shit because they don't want to deal with them. All right, just give him some of these pills, man. He HD, HD, go put him in special ed. You know what I mean? Some crazy shit. It's crazy what's happening out here. Instead of saying this kid got a gift, he not going to do all this. He, he not paying attention to this teacher because the teacher, the school set up so goddamn silly. Sit and be quiet. You asking a goddamn kid to sit in one place for an hour and a half and just be quiet and listen. I know adults that can't even do that. So you asking a kid? Of course you're going to say he got ADHD. He born as a kid to, to want to run around and, and, and do crazy stuff and explore. Those, this is a prison system. So why am I saying all this? Because today is the time for you to get back. I'm trying to bring you back to when you was a kid and you had these things and you didn't cultivate them or you might have cultivated them in private, but you didn't think they were worth anything. Didn't think these gifts of talents were worth anything. Only thing you knew was to go get a job and get a paycheck. That's all you knew. That was your survival. The, people tell you those things are cool, whatever, but you got to survive and you got to get a job. You got to do these things. So the world is changing today. The world is changing. It's already changed. You understand what I'm saying? And Seth Golden, who is... And authority, I use those words in quotes, on marketing, which I got some of his books. He said, I mean, he's a genius. He says in his latest work that the world has changed so much as far as business that the, the new people who are going to get wealthy in this society, and I'm paraphrasing and adding shit, but this is what he was basically saying, uh, are the creative people, people who can use their mind and create things because we live in a global economy. The, the, the idea of being a robot and going to work every single day, that's changing. Some, some people, that's still going to exist, but not to the degree that it existed. And in, in 20 years, this shit ain't going to exist no more. And we know in 100 years, that shit done with. You know, machines and robots are running everything that's, that's menial. And it's a good thing. People look at it as a bad thing because they're hanging on to some shit. They didn't follow their dreams. And so they're like, oh, I'm not creative. Oh, I, all I think I know how to do is be a fucking robot. Don't take this away from me. Don't create a robot to do shit a robot could do, even though I'm a human being with a mind and a soul and creative abilities outside of this world. Don't take that away from me that I can just be a robot. People complain about that. I mean, you go to the grocery store, there's no use for a cashier anymore. There just isn't no use. There's, there, 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 I mean, at one at the most. Maybe they help you punch in a little fruit because that shit gets in there. You got to punch in the code. At some point, they're going to stop. They're going to figure out how to just say cucumber, motherfucker. And, it, and you put it on there because, you know, they got to punch in that stupid weight code shit for each each item. But so at some point, they're gonna, you're going to be able to just punch it in on the little automated machine. If you don't have automated machines, auto checkout where you're at, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But if you have auto checkout, you know what I'm talking about. You can just go to the goddamn register yourself and check your own self out. I used to work at a grocery store when they first started that. Believe it or not, I worked at Vaughn's grocery store when they first started that. And the cashiers were losing their mind. Like, man, that's not right, man. They're replacing us with these machines. Well, I mean, no offense to you, but what we're doing is machine work. Why the fuck would we want to sit here and do this every goddamn day? You understand what I'm saying? It's a work a machine can do. So you can be free to go be creative and go back to them dreams that you had. But you so goddamn scared and suppressed because you was never taught that you was, you you got a mind and you can create whatever you want that you just you in this little oh I gotta be a robot that shit dying I'm talking to you so these stories are should be should be triggering something in you where you're remembering what the hell going on at today now I'm about to close out I told you I had a lot to say but you know this ain't I can go for an hour. And you would fucking sit here and listen because the shit is so goddamn true and it's so much game and so potent of wisdom because that's all I'm talking to you about. Now, I've been, now I said all I had to say there. That, so it's on record. You can keep going back and listen over again so you can keep extracting the wisdom. If you only watch the video one time and you, you, you still don't get it. Shit I'm saying is so deep you can't listen to it. The first time you get it, you ain't even, you, you got one sentence out of it. Maybe. But if you keep listening to it, you're going to be like, this dude, I mean, I need a goddamn Nobel Peace Prize. 
And I'm not arrogant. I'm just telling the truth because the shit I'm saying will move society to the next level. You understand what I'm saying? But how do I get this? Not why am I so wise and so all this? Because I have taken myself out of society and and taken myself inside of myself. You understand what I'm saying? The same thing you got to do. And just that's it. So that's where you see the wisdom come out of me. It's not because I'm just born. You know what I'm saying? And and, and just some mystical power. I just I just let it go. And realize when you study and you start to get in yourself how crazy this shit is out here. Not in a negative way, but just in a crazy way. You understand? Because shit, I was, people look at me like, man, you crazy, man. No, I'm not fucking crazy. You crazy. Because you would want to go and, and, and suppress. You got one life to live with all this creative mind. You can create businesses. You can create wealth. You can create music. And you choose to sit there. And do something that you hate to do every day because it earns such little money. People say hard work pays off. And I'm going to be, I got to get on, get on some heads because you might be stuck in this. People say hard work pays off. Now, the hardest I ever worked, the hardest I ever worked was at, and you hear me talk about it, was at the goddamn distribution at Target Warehouse. Ain't no more harder work now. And anybody that find harder work, then for 10 hours on your feet, constantly moving, stacking 40, 50 pound boxes, TVs, and all kind of shit for 10 hours, legitimately 10 hours straight. Not, not, not straight, you get a break, but I mean legitimately 10 hours. You moving all 10 hours. You, you backed up because you got four, five trailers. I mean, you, you can't get no more hard work. You know how much it paid off? I can tell you exactly how much hard work paid off. It paid me $416.25 after taxes. For an entire week. Now that's not that much of a payoff for the type of work I was doing. I ain't worked that hard since in my life. I just ain't. Now I've been getting paid way more than that. Now, what I was going to talk to you too, what I really want to talk about today was uh, goal setting and goals. Now, not just goal setting, because that's some shit you didn't did, you didn't failed, and we, you know, you just, you know, tired of doing it. But I'm not talking about that. I'm going to tell you how to really, really get what you want. All right, so last month I said, I said, you know what? I ain't set a goal. I mean, I always set goals, but I, 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 I let me really set a financial goal and go for it. Because sometimes I just kind of float around because my money's automated. So I said, let me set a financial goal. Okay, let me see how much did I make last month. All right, I'm going to make this month. And this is very deep what I'm telling you. Pay attention. Listen to me good. Now, I set this goal. And I tracked everything I made every day. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the month, I hit this goal damn near exactly. Shit scared the shit out of me almost. Because not only did I hit the goal, but I mean I hit for different websites. I like I want this website to make this much. So I, I said exactly how much I want these different websites to make. And they made exactly that. They made exactly that. Now my goal was a five figure goal. It was a five figure a month goal. And um I realized something though. When I hit it, my life didn't change that much. I didn't change that much. In fact, it didn't change at all because it wasn't a paradigm life-changing goal. It was a realistic goal. It was a goal that if I show people, they say, "Oh, yeah, that's realistic. Oh, yeah, that's it's." But it wasn't a. It wasn't my goal. It was a goal that I knew that I could hit if I just did a few things here and there. I already knew how to do it. And honestly, it wasn't a life-changing goal. My life is still the same. You understand what I'm saying? A few thousand here, a few thousand there, but. And so, I just want to talk to you about, are you setting goals that are in your current zone? Because, check this out. This is deep. We're going to get deep with you so you can get out of this shit and get into your own. Now, we set these goals inside of our already comfort zone, trying to expand it a little bit. And the reality of it is we have to set goals that shatter our entire existence. You understand what I'm saying? If you look at your current condition of everything you got, bills, money, studio, your living situation, you look at that. That's your current paradigm, right? That's where you at currently. Now, if you set a goal realistically, it's going to be something that's just a little higher than what you're already doing, but it's not going to shatter that. 
you're not gonna go. Let's say you got a studio, uh, and you got, you know, a computer, a laptop. You got some little shit in your room. You're probably gonna set goals that's make it your extra keyboard, right? It may get you a new sound this next month. It may get you some some a new mic, but it's not gonna get you that beautiful studio that you're dreaming about where you can go in it's private it shit is fly you got compressors you got all the things that you you know a, a nice professional studio would have your arts artists can come in and feel comfortable you feel in the zone you got your artwork you see that's that's the higher level right and instead of setting your goal there because that's unrealistic to you right that may be times 25 the amount of money you make in this month or you made last month. And if you tell somebody, they're going to say, well, how the hell are you going to do that? You're going to be like, I don't fucking know how I'm going to do it. But that's the secret. That's the secret. You set these goals. And what triggered all this was that I, I got this audio book. I already read the book. And I got the audio book. The Spirit led me to the audio book called 10X. And this is this guy talking about you got to do everything 10 times 10. And so... He, and in there, one of the parts he was talking about set your goals times ten, because you are you're thinking too small already. It don't matter what your goal is, it's too small. Multiply times ten, so I multiply mine times like twenty five. Like fuck it. And so what I immediately noticed was that when I did this, I, I made a life changing goal because I was comfortable in the situation I was already in. I'm comfortable, so my goals get me a little bit here. They may see what I'm saying it's like this box. Your goals may get you a little out here, a little bit here, but it's no real excitement there. There's no real life altering, life changing there. So what we got to do is set these things, not stupid, but real to us, what we really want. Now, stupid would be, I just want to make $100 million a month. Why is that stupid? Is it because it's not possible? No. Rupert Murdoch made that more than that. He made, I think it was like $400 million a month last year. $400 million a month. If you calculate that over four billion, he 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 made. So it's not that, but it's because it doesn't represent your next level. It has to represent your next level. Everybody's different. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Say, damn it, what's my next fucking level? That's out of this world for me that I want to experience in this life. And that's where you want to go. Where you don't even know how the fuck you're gonna get there. You don't even, you, and it don't matter. But this is the secret. Once you set that goal, this is how you achieve it. You go back to the classics because it's all in the mind. It's all in the. It's all in here. I don't give a damn what you say. It's all in here. So what I've been doing is going back to the classics. So this right here, as a man thinking, you may have this book, you may have heard of it, and I just, I went and bought it. I had it read it before. I went and got it again. And you see, you know, I, I just go in, I read it every single day. I go back and I read not the whole book every day. I'm underlining the important parts. So when I read the first time, I read the whole book probably about six, seven times straight, and then. I, I had the important stuff underlined, the key points, and then now I just go and I read, the, I open it, read the key points, read a couple paragraphs to remind me that it's all in the mind. So basically, what's happening is you have a self image. Wherever you're at right now, that's what your current thinking is. That's your self image. Okay? And so, what you're seeking to do is change your self image because everything in your life is based upon how you see yourself, not in the mirror, but in the mind. So, what you have to do is visualize yourself. Now, think about the high goal. But what does that represent? That represents a certain way of living, a certain things that you have, certain things that you're able to do that you're not able to do now. And you visualize yourself doing those things. This is the most important part. If you do that, everything in life is going to change. Because that's the secret of the ages. Now, I've studied, I mean, so much self-development that it, it boggles the mind. I lived with Buddhist monks for months on a meditation center. I've done these things. I do these things. Undoubtedly, what I found, no matter who has the new secret system to self-development, new secret system to manifest our desires, it all comes back to one thing. And I got it all. Bookshelf full of stuff, courses, DVDs. It comes down to visualizing. That's the secret sauce. Spending the time visualizing and seeing yourself in the new life you want to live. I mean, it, it, it's no more basic than that. And that's just the reality of it. It's, life is that simple. 
Now, some fool is going to say, well, you don't have to do any action. Well, the action you take will get you to where you want to go because the actions you're taking now ain't getting you no goddamn where. So when you visualize, what happens is you take higher levels of action, but you see the shit that you didn't see before. You are sitting on a gold mine already that you've created that you just don't see. So when I set my goal time 25, when I initially set it, I didn't see how I was going to get that. Right? I didn't see it. When I started to visualize myself and read the books and go back to the classics and, and reinvigorate my mind, immediately I saw where I was already sitting on that type of cast just by doing a few moves that I already had in my realm. I, did, I just became aware of what was already in my life, but because my thinking was so small, I wasn't aware of what was already in front of me. Scientifically, they would call that the RAS, Recticular Activating System. Listen to me good. Which is the filter for what we process. Now, I don't want to get too scientific because some of y'all going to be like, man, I don't get this shit, dog. You know what I'm saying? You talk, you talk, but I'm going to give you some science because you you smart enough to understand what I'm saying. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm not just saying some shit. You can research everything I say and you'll be like, God damn it, this dude is, is ridiculously on point with what the fuck he's saying. Now, this reticular activating system is a filtering mechanism for our brains because we receive billions and billions and billions and trillions of information data per second. We receive, our brain is receiving everything as information. So we're receiving all this. So our rect RAS for short is filtering all this data to, for us to only see what it is that we need to see to do what we need to do to get what we need to get. Now, what is the filtering mechanism? How does it filter? Based upon what we set our minds to. So, if we set our mind, example, to lose weight. This example, I want to lose weight. All around you, it's been books, it's been, it been advertisements, but you ain't never seen them because your mind filtered that out because it, it, it saw it as not important. It's not on target to where we're trying to go. So there's no reason for you to see it. You didn't even see them. You put your mind on it, and you see those ads everywhere. Just like when you get a car, right? You never see the car on the road. The moment you get that car, you see that car everywhere. That's not an accident. That's because the filtering system, the RAS, now is locking on to everything that can that is in that same realm, right? Because you now set your target on this car. Even before you get it, once you set your target on it, it starts to see it everywhere. Because you set your goal so low, it filters out everything that's going to get you to the next level. It's filtering it out. Literally, it could be right in front of you. And to check what I'm saying, research stories of people who stumbled upon fortunes like having an antique. How do you think that happens? Here's a, a fool, and I call him a fool just in the funny sense, that out here struggling for money. <coughs> right? Struggling. But got an antique worth $1.7 million sitting right there. You know what I mean? You were just collecting dust in their garage. And then finally, when they desire to get strong enough to want bigger than they ever wanted, they see that and go, I wonder how much that's worth. But they've been sitting there for years. Right? Now all of a sudden, they mind see and go, bruh, bruh, triggers let off. And they go and, and sell it for $1.7 million. That happens all the time. Or they go to a yard sale. And pick up this item, and that item worth five hundred thousand dollars, and they got it for four bucks. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? These these ain't accidents, and it ain't spooky either. They set their mind higher, whether they are conscious of what they did or not, because an extreme pull in the opposite direction, like something happens to you, and you create this strong desire. Sometimes you do it without even knowing. So you can ask them, well, how did you, did you set this high? Sometimes they'll say, I mean, research it. I'm not just saying this shit because I'm making it up. Research what I'm saying. And you'll say, damn, this dude knows the fuck he's talking about because I already researched it. So sometimes they knew that they set this high goal and wanted this money 
and they were aware of the subconscious mind and all these things, sometimes they didn't. They just would have this longing or this desire, and it would automatically spun their thinking in that direction. Because you can have so much intense desire in something, they call it a burning desire, that even though you don't know the function that's happening, it creates this, this strong vision for you. And then it attracts these things and you can see them in your world. Why am I telling you all this? Because it's time for you to get out of thinking in the same little zone. If I could just kind of get a little here, and I could put this over here, a little over here, and, and I could squeak by, and, and I'll be okay, and just bit now. You've got to think way outside of where you're at, bigger than you ever thought before, and visualize it every day. This ain't nothing new. I'm not giving you no groundbreaking fucking secret. You know, I could be on here talking about I'm giving you the number one secret to this, and it's all the same shit. Visualize it every day, all day, man. They say, well, <clears throat> like, this book right here, Psycho Cybernetics, see how fucked up this book is? That tell you how old this shit is. You know what I'm saying? I, I tell you, I go in on these books. I go in. So I went back to my, my Psycho Cybernetics. I've had this. This is one of my first books on mind chaining and understanding this. This, this. this is when I first understood the self-image. I didn't know what the self-image was. So I read this book, and it blew my mind. It... It was talking about how our brains are so uh, accurate that whatever we set it to is going to get. So our problem is we're setting these small targets because that's everybody around us set these small targets. And that book, again, is called Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Moss. You understand what I'm saying? So we're setting these small goals and these small things and these small targets because everybody else around them is setting those. But you're not life altering. So one, you run out of steam and you don't never achieve them. Are you achieving? Don't realize you're achieving because they're so small and insignificant that you didn't change your life. You understand? So what I want you to do is I want you to visualize yourself living that life. And you already knew to do this. You just haven't been doing it. To be honest, right? You haven't been doing it, or you've been slacking a little bit. You just needed somebody to remind you to do this because ain't shit gonna change. Unless you do that, you can take all the action you want. Set this high goal, set this vision for your life that's bigger than all the shit you're doing now, and just see yourself in that shit. People suggest doing it when you wake up and when you go to bed. I do shit every time I think about it. Like, I try to do visualize 10, 20 times a day. Because if I know something that's going to change what I'm doing, why the fuck would I wait to do it at one time in the morning, one time at night? But that's my mindset. I'm always trying to just do as much. If, if, if I find something that works, I just want to, I just like to just go in and just see. But that's my mindset. What's your mindset? You know what I'm saying? Is it to hear something like this and then go, oh, yeah, you know, I, I heard that. You know, oh, yeah, that's true, man. I know about it, but then you don't do it. Then you know why the hell you ain't getting no goddamn results. So don't come back crying and shit. Well, I don't understand why, you know, my life ain't. You know why, goddamn it. I'm telling you why right now. If, if, if you, that's all you did, if that's all you did, like you said, I'm not going to do shit else. I'm not going to market. I'm not going to make a beat. I'm not going to do nothing but that. Your life would still change hella fast because it can't help but not to. Once your, once your thinking is on that level and you visualize it and you start to see that and you start to feel that, it, it got to happen. It got to happen. That's the secret of the ages. You understand what I'm saying? That's what, but but if, you, if you think about it, you may say to yourself, well, if that's so easy, why ain't everybody doing it? Because everybody wasn't taught that shit in school. People was taught. I mean, you got to remember, to you, as a, a being that may have heard this a thousand times, because you're seeking it, think about when you was in school and growing up, going back to that. What were you taught? One, if you were taught any religious stuff, mostly God was in the sky telling you you're going to hell, or you're getting a blessing or some shit, somebody else getting blessed, and you got to be good, silly shit. Or, even if you didn't hear none of that, in school, they never taught you about nothing, about no visualization. They never taught it to you. But the founders of America, at least, knew all about it. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. I don't fucking know. I wasn't there. You understand what I'm saying? I wasn't there. So I can't say that it was this or that. Why they did it? Who the fuck know? But what I do know is you got millions of kids, and you were once a kid. In the school system, 
that never just said, hey, you guys, all you got to do is visualize where you want to go and you'll be that. You may have had somebody pull you aside, a teacher who knew the game, who kind of slid it to you or something, but it wasn't a class. It wasn't a class. What if every single semester you had to take a class on self-development visualization and all you did was write goals and visualize yourself? I mean, you know how fucking far ahead this world would be? Probably no diseases. I mean, we'd be flying through space, astral projecting, and we'd be all have our own little jetpacks and fly around. You know what I'm saying? Because every kid would be visualizing some crazy shit and then would have the belief and confidence they could do it. And they would go out and do it. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to think about that. You have a whole society where they ain't learning this stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing. You just didn't learn nothing about it. So, of course, you, the world looks like it looks. Of course, you're going to say, well, you know, you go, well, turn on the news, they don't say nothing about visualize. I tell you, death, destruction, death, destruction, death, destruction. It's an insane world out here. So what I'm doing is breaking your ass. You got to come out of that. Come out from among them. You got to come out of that whole world. The shit is destruction. It's death. They crazy. I'm crazy because I'm looking at this shit. I, I, listen, I go in places and accidentally hear the news because the news is on. Accidentally, I mean, you know how you had a shit on TV? They had a TV on, you go in a barbershop, you go in a restaurant. And my mind automatically counts. Listen, because when you go on commercial break, like my mind is so tuned to this already. So when you go to commercial break, the news tells you all the upcoming stories. So the first thing I look at is what are they talking about in the upcoming stories? I swear to you, this just happened yesterday. It was death, carjack, murder mayhem, and some other type of fucking thing to put fear into you. The, the next four top stories we're going to tell you. Who the fuck would want to sit here and hear that shit? A crazy person. Right? Like, yo, I'm ready to just fuck the rest of my day up. Tell me about who got murdered. Tell me about some robbery. Tell me about some heinous crime. And tell me about how dangerous it is and how much fear we got to have with the next code or some shit uncurable shit or some prescription and gave somebody, you know, anal bleeding, you know, excessive anal bleeding and caused death and, and you may be at risk. You know? Like like and and, and we just sit, sit there and watch this shit. Like, oh, oh, really? Not about all the good shit that's happening. And I'm crazy. Cause I'm like, yo, I don't want to hear none of that shit. I don't give a damn who got murdered. I don't give a damn about none of it. I don't want to hear none of it. I don't give a damn because I got my life to live and I want to stay positive. I want to be happy. I want to enjoy life and I don't want to be in fear of all this shit that's going on that ain't really a whole lot going on. They find the one spot. If you walked out right now, you run into and just walk around a populated city, you run into 100,000 people. You just walked around one day and you wouldn't find one evidence of violence or fear. You would meet nice people, but they go and find. You got to remember. People call them and say, here's something negative, and they go, oh, let's go to that. That's not a real representation of the world. That's what they're finding to give to you to induce fear. In a state of fear, you're going to be more apt to buy something to get away from fear. So their advertisers then advertise these pleasure-inducing commercials that get you out of fear so then you can go buy some new stuff and things like that. Now, that's deeper game. You know what I'm saying? That you might even understand what I'm talking about. Some of you do. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. It makes sense. But when you study marketing, you understand all this stuff. So I'm just trying to give you the game in your language. In your language. I speak many languages. All of them in English. I speak Ebonics. I speak Harvard professor. I speak broken English. I speak nigger English. I speak mid-grade English. I speak ten different English languages. You understand what I'm saying? And so I'm talking to your ass because this is what you need to hear and just do what I'm saying, do. You don't got to be smart. You ain't got to have an education. You don't got to be nothing. All you have to do is visualize yourself the way you, you, you want to be. Your, your mammy and your pappy and your auntie and grandmama and them ain't going to tell you that because they don't motherfucking know because they didn't, wasn't taught that when they was kids. Everything most people know, they, they was taught as kids and they still believe the shit as a grown ass adult. Everything. I don't give a damn what you, your religion, everything was given to you as a child. For the most part, you grow up and just keep believing the shit because everybody else around you believed it. And if someone challenged you, you always look at them as the enemy or somebody who was crazy or somebody because they challenged the shit that you grew up with.
And so you never, they never really was able to get out of that, that mind control. I'm out of it. So I'm getting your ass up out of it. So visualize yourself. Turn off all the negative stuff. You got to turn it off. You got to turn it off. You got to turn it off. I mean, people saying all, people be talking to me and they be wanting to tell, oh, woe is me, this, this, I, I love you, but I ain't trying to hear that shit. Tell me about what's good in your life. Man, because it's so crazy. People first, a lot of people first inclination to connect with you is to complain about something or tell you about something somebody else did. Not that I don't do this and fall victim to this. The difference is, one, I don't do it all the time. And, two, I catch myself when, I do, when I'm doing it. I'm going, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I talking about here? You know what I'm saying? Get back on track. Sometimes you got to release. I understand that. People are going to frustrate it. I'm never saying don't be a human being. What I'm saying is be aware of what you're doing. You want to just focus on your vision, where you want to go, fuck everything else. Now, this is a long-ass video because I need to be on a while. You might not see me for a while. But, but I'm just telling you how to recap, set them goals bigger. Don't say shit about my camera. I mean, you can, but... I shit on you in the first part, so why would you say something about the camera? But unless you're a girl, girls, you can say something about the camera. Guys, you make me uncomfortable talking about you want to see me more clearly, so don't do that. I might even ban you. Um, now, two, think bigger. Them little ass shit y'all trying to go after is too little. Think where you want. What's the shit you want? If I gave hundred million dollars, what would you go out and buy? Don't tell me this shit about you just want to be comfortable. You already comfortable, motherfucker, because that's where you live in comfortable. That's why you where you at, because you comfortable. So that's some stupid shit people say. I just want to be comfortable. Motherfucker, you were comfortable. That's what that's what a paradigm is. You in the comfort zone. That's the stupid shit I ever heard. You don't want to be comfortable. You just want to do what you want to do. And you want to have what you want to have. So you need to think about what you want to have. Ain't no limits. You got one life to live. Don't limit it. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, how in between you are. Start right now. The past don't matter. You're about to create your future. Think bigger. Two, three, visualize every day. You got to just clear your mind, visualize. I, I stay burning incense and visualize. One thing that helps me is burning incense because it programs my smell. When I smell a certain smell, I buy the same incense all the time. And I actually just bought like a fucking 30 pack. I mean like 30 boxes, believe it or not. I think it was like 30, but yeah, it comes like 30 boxes or 20 boxes. But um, it was like 20 bucks. It was dope. But um, I use incense because when I, bit, like, it, the smell of that particular incense, because I've linked it to med meditative states. It induces the meditative state for me. It helps. So if you if you get incense or something like that, or a certain smell, a candle, and, and that helps because you it, it always visualize that smell, it'll start to trigger. Right? Like if you smell something that you love to eat, you'll get hungry. Same type of shit. Tr smell is one of our strongest senses, believe it or not. Um, it's one of our truest senses because you can see somebody look clean as hell. You're like, damn, that person clean. You smell, they smell like dogs. You go, hey, my eyes trick me. You sounded good, you look good, but you can't trick my nose. Stank. That's some gang. But anyways, I digress. Visualize. See yourself. See yourself there. See it. Feel it. Breathe it. Don't give up because you can't really... Do it the first couple of times. Your mind's going over the place. Mind does that too. Stick with it. Pretty soon you start to get clear and you start to get this burning desire for this picture. So think it bigger and visualize it every day. So that's it. Live off beats. This was a 50 minute video. If you made it through this video, give yourselves a hand clap because, God damn it, I went in for 50 minutes. And you just got 50 minutes of pure wisdom. There's most shows on TV, a good show is an hour. Pure bullshit. It's entertaining, but it's pure bullshit. You just sat through 50 minutes of pure knowledge, game, wisdom, understanding. Your mind, you're probably high. If you, you if it isn't even 50 minutes, you probably, when you turn this off, you're going to be high on life. I guarantee it. I know it. Because whenever I hear pure 
game and wisdom and principles, I get high. Not because it's me, it's the message. The postman is a messenger. The message is what's getting you high. You can get the message from anywhere, but I'm speaking your language. So that's why you're getting it from me. It's getting you high. So go out, live your life. And four, block out all that bullshit. Negative shit. Don't, you don't want to hear nothing negative. Nothing. Everything positive. And to the point where people are like, man, you delusional. Be delusional. Be insane. But be positively insane. God damn it, I'm going to be the happiest delusional motherfucker on the planet. That's how you got to think. Because if you normal motherfucker and you going through nervous breakdowns and you, you in fear all the time, God damn it, I want to be delusional. Just say, I want to be that happy delusional motherfucker. Like, that dude is crazy, but he happy as hell. Hey, I'll take that. So, liveoffbeats.com. Uh, go, if you ain't signed up, go to Live Off Beats. You should sign up by now. I mean, God damn, after 100 videos, you ain't signed up yet. You, you ain't going to sign up now, so it don't matter. So, liveoffbeats.com. Love y'all. Peace. Peace.